six months ago, I asked ChatGPT to help me lose weight. And in the last six months, I've lost 57 pounds, something I've never been able to do before. Previously, when on a diet, I'd always become so hungry, ravenously hungry, and the diets would inevitably fail. So I've decided to ask ChatGPT, why is that the case? For years, I believe you can't truly lose weight. And if you do, you are doomed to a life of relentless hunger. Every time I dieted, the hunger was overwhelming, like there was no off switch. Think about it. 50 plus years and billions of dollars poured into weight loss research and still most people can't lose weight. Most studies show minimal short-term results. So I decided to ask ChatGPT to do a deep dive into the real science of weight loss and I had two questions. What happens to the body when we lose weight? Is there a set point? Does it fight you? Number two, if you lose weight, will the hunger ever go back to normal or are you stuck wanting to binge forever? In other words, are we doomed to a life of hunger after losing weight? When you lose weight, your body doesn't just let it happen quietly. It fights back. And here's what the research shows. Number one, metabolic adaptation. Losing weight lowers your calorie burn but in obesity individuals, the drop is way larger than expected, and that's called metabolic adaptation. A 2016 study on the Biggest Loser contestants found that formerly obese individuals had a resting metabolic rate approximately 700 calories lower than someone of the same size who had never dieted. Worse, this persisted for six years. Number two, hormonal adaptations. Fat and gut hormones shift as body fat drops. For example, leptin, a hormone that suppresses appetite, plummets by up to 90%. Hunger hormones like ghrelin surge. Even after a year, most people's hormones are still screaming, eat. And number three is brain rewiring. Neuroimaging shows increased activity in the food reward areas and weaker control circuits, which means you want more food and you have less willpower to resist it. This is why just seeing junk food can feel overwhelming when dieting, your brain is rewired to make you want to eat it. So unfortunately, yes. When you lose weight, your body acts like it's starving. And this doesn't just vanish after a few months. All of these markers persist for years. Here's the surprise. It's not about what diet you're on. High protein, keto, plant-based, none of them outperform each other long-term. But what does matter when they've looked at people that have lost weight and kept it off for over a year is psychological and behavioral interventions. The biggest predictors of long-term weight loss success weren't the diets. They were habits, mindsets, and coping skills. And weirdly enough, they are the exact things I use with ChatGPT to lose 55 pounds. I'll give you an example. The milkshake study at Yale shows the power of psychology over physiology. In the experiment, people thought they were getting the same milkshake. One group thought it was an indulgent, high calorie, sweet milkshake. The other thought it was just a diet drink. Those who believed it was an indulgent, high calorie shake had a three times drop in the hunger hormone ghrelin. Belief literally changed their physiology and hunger signals. So what were the habits of people who lost weight and kept it off for over a year? High daily activity. Nearly all long-term weight loss maintainers walk or exercise for about one hour or more a day. This helps burn 600 calories a day, and this offsets the metabolic drop that you see when you do lose weight, as well as making you feel good and in control. ChatGPT, right from the start, made me walk five kilometers every day. This was just over an hour a day. On days I didn't exercise, I noticeably felt hungrier. 
Number two is diet adherence. The type of diet may not matter, but consistently eating low calorie, high protein whole foods did matter and was the most common theme among most people that had kept weight off permanently. ChatGPT put me on this diet straight away. I was on keto originally and thought I'd be starving and because it involved carbs, those had always made me hungry before, but no. Turns out it wasn't the lack of carbs that filled me up, but the added protein. Number three, self-monitoring. Weigh-ins and food logs keep people honest and they can correct course when needed. This is where ChatGPT really helps me. I do daily check-ins, log my food every day, and it keeps me accountable. If I do overeat, I knew I have, and ChatGPT will do a quick course correction. Number four, coping strategies. Most maintainers have a way to handle setbacks. Cognitive behavioral therapy helps identify triggers and recover when you fail. And the recovering when you fail was one of the main factors that helped people succeed in keeping weight off. And that's another big win for ChatGPT. For years, I thought you needed to be perfect when you dieted, and it would only take a few slip ups before I gave up. ChatGPT taught me something I'd never grasped in all these years. Failure wasn't the end, it was a part of the plan. And there were a lot of failures that I made, but because of ChatGPT, I never gave up, I adapted, and I kept going. Number five, mindset. Success comes from believing weight loss is a skill. With each recovery from a setback, confidence builds. To add to my last example, each time I failed and got back up, I developed confidence. Confidence that failure was a part of the process, just another chapter of the story. Expected, it was simply something to be overcome. And the final thing that helped is common among people that have lost weight and kept it off is support networks. Friends, family, online groups, and yes, ChatGPT. It's not quite human, not quite a robot. That weird in between which makes it the best accountability partner I've ever had. You feel you can open up to it about anything and at any time, but feel guilty if you don't check in. The constant check-ins have been a godsend and have always been available 24-7, so it's just amazing. All these behavioral tools don't eliminate the hunger, but they help you manage it long enough to reach something much bigger. And this is proven by the science and the research, and these are the common traits that all people who had lost weight had. But here's the twist. If you are obese and lose weight, you enter a state known as calorie restriction with adequate nutrition, otherwise known as CRAN. And this is the most powerful health intervention ever studied according to decades of aging research in both animals and humans. Remember at the start when I said your body reduces metabolism? It is more efficient at getting the most out of every calorie when you lose weight. That sucks in terms of hunger, but it's the exact reason why you enter into a cran state. You become a clean burning machine producing fewer inflammatory byproducts and thus aging more slowly. In animals, CRAN has been shown to extend lifespan by up to 50%. In humans, it slows biological aging, improves metabolic markers, reduces inflammation, and boosts brain function. The cognitive benefits from the calorie study showed better emotional regulation, improved working memory, and reduced impulsivity. And here's the best part. Even though your hormones don't fully reset, people on CRAN report less hunger over time. Why? Because their brain begins to adapt to the state. You become calmer, more focused, and more resilient to stress. You don't just lose weight, you enter the optimal human mode, the biological sweet spot evolution never expected you to reach. That very thing that felt like a curse, hunger, slower metabolism, discipline, becomes the gateway to a body and brain state that outperforms the average normal weight person in nearly every category. Longer life, 
better focus, deeper calm, stronger will, and better health. And in that sense, obesity isn't a curse, it's a crucible. And if you survive it, you come out sharper, stronger, and more prepared than anyone else to thrive.